Boy, I sure do have this project spread out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Job Shop USA. My name is Keith and we're here in my shop. I've got stuff all over the place for this project that we've been working on. And I, I, I just switched memory cards in, in the camera because I'm creating so much footage of carrying along with the individual details of this all right we are actually setting up the final stages of the spline shaft and start grinding the splines so let's go take a closer look at the grinder both of our tools our tooling for this grinding setup are complete and we just readjusted our whole piece in here because even though we took and aligned this with this there's a straight run precision straight run on the back of this that runs parallel to this on the back side and we dialed that in and tightened down the the table we did have to put some shims in here because there's a little bit of difference between the flats on the toe clamp planes and the planes for the surface for either the magnetic table your working surface is a little bit higher than this outside. So we shimmed that so that we could have non uh, stress, non stress on our mount here. So we're 100% there. Then we put our part in here, and this is a ground diameter, and this is a ground diameter, and we're within, we're less than a tenth or so on those two diameters there. So then we take it, we set up our, our indicator and across the top and also on the back side here. So we're straight in line this way and we're straight in line this way here. So we're gonna be grinding our splines in here, the root and the sides if we need to, in the same setup. Um, we'll, we'll change out stones for doing the radius or the diameter of the root or the flat on the side of the splines like this. And, Nope. All right, our spring-loaded mount, we decided not to put a finger thing in here. We, why, why go through the extra work? And if we need to modify it for another job at another time, we can do that as well. So that's how we're going to index our part. In fact, actually, we'll be able to grind it, make a pass, make a pass, make a pass, Make a pass, you get the you get the idea. Okay, let me pull my mag base off of here because we know that we are true. We're gonna pop the shaft out of here for a minute. And we're gonna pop in our second tool. And this, we found a piece of coal roll, um, which a good, nice finish. We center drilled it at both sides so that we can put it in here. We offset our ball uh, locator and the spline setup so that we can flip the shaft. It, we're still in there and the uh, nib can bypass the ball with no issue. So we don't need to remove that to use this. And we can pop out the shaft real quick. We can put this back in and we can redress our wheel if we want to. All right. I know this is inch and a quarter and I know the root of the spline is 1465. So inch and a quarter 
from the 1465 divided in half was our dimension of 107 and a half. So I took a piece of aluminum in the mill and I milled it flat and then I took that depth and I just milled a slot across. So now I have a dummy way of setting this. Right now we're proud because that's not able to sit on the, the shelves there. All right, so if we hold that there and we just put our thumb underneath here. We tighten that up. We're at the perfect radius with our nib. And I don't think we're going to wear the nib down. I think, it, you know, right now I think it's set for the job. All right. Um, so we'll be able to radius our wheel. Now in our collection of everything, this is a half inch wheel. So there's no way that it's going to go down in here and do what it needs to do. Um, the, the side that we could use, we could use that for the side, but I've gone through the collection of stones that viewers from the past have thrown in to me and also I have a second arbor that fits this so I'm taking this quarter inch wide wheel which is exactly perfect for the application here and I'm going to mount it on this arbor and I'm going to pop off this arbor here and we will dress this one here because this is the perfect width that will go down into here at first I thought it was a little narrow but it's not okay I look back at the video and I just want to make sure that you had a good view of how that was set all right that height right there is the height of the nib from this surface right here my Allen, I held it in the sander and I sanded a flat on it so it, it doesn't dig into my nib uh, and create a, a, a distorted surface on the outside of my nib. We're going to pull off our wheel arbor, the whole arbor and the wheel. Um, I, I have all the wrenches for this machine and this one here is for this one right here. Okay. And... Hold a little pressure on the back side and I think that's it okay I found two of these arbors on eBay today and when I found the other one with the other stone and just like Stan at Bar Z, he says, get as, get as many as you can because this wheel really is already set up with this arbor and it's running pretty true and it's been dressed. And if you're changing out the arbor and everything else, when you come back to it, it's closer than if you had pulled the whole thing apart and put the whole thing back together. All right, and now I just need to make a rack on the wall that will actually hold these wheels with the arbors already. And I'll have at least four of them. Taper fits have got to be really, really clean. Gotta make sure there's nothing in there. Make sure there's nothing in this one here as well there's many different designs actually the ones online that I bought looked like this and the, and they actually have this is like a belt diameter here for uh, other accessories or to drive this on another spindle and this one doesn't have that this is actually kind of shouldered out but it's the same taper and it fits on the same way and the wheel sits in the same position
right? And I didn't tighten that wheel on there, but I can do that all at the same time and making sure that the taper is tight. All right. All right. That's as, that's as, that's as much as you need right there. All right, we're ready to start grinding. Actually, because it is a, it is a used stone, I wanna go ahead and fire it up and let it spin. Just make sure it's not gonna explode or anything else on us. I have a lot of stones that were given to me and here's another one here as well and I almost thought I was going to be wanting to use this and maybe dress on each side because this is three eighths of an inch and and uh, it wouldn't really fit in between the splines there so and then I dug into the box and I found this but all the old stones there's a few scratches and you know dings on here but you got to give them the once over this has been uh, rubbed on the side here uh, there's a little chunk out of there so you you really you got to take a look, look at your stone. I also had another smaller one here, but you can see that it has an angle and whatnot ground into it. Hence, having something that's a, a project that you come about a, a couple times a year or, what, or, or even just a couple times a month or whatever, now that I have the brown and sharp here functioning and, and up and running and stuff, I'm probably going to use it a lot more because it is fun to be able to set up and get your grind finishes. And the tool post grinder, even though that's a morphodited unit I have, um, hey, who knows if a good do more or something comes along the way and uh, fits the bill, you know, and I have the need for it, I'll pick it up. Otherwise, I'll keep tweaking on that one there and get the job done the way I got the job done on this project. All right. I'm going to put the spline shaft in here first because I need to gauge this wheel center of the part. And this wheel is almost exactly what it needs to be to fit down in that groove so it will be very easy to center this once i have it centered i can pop out the spline pop the nib back in and then create the radius grind i have set the stone in the center of <clears throat> the spline here so that it'll be coming down and it's going to be just cleaning the bottom of the spline the stone barely overhangs into the relief on each side of that that surface we're going to be grinding so i've checked that plus i've adjusted making sure that these are tight the travel that we're going to be doing we can come back here because then i can grab this and i can rotate it and then come back down in here <clears throat> okay, now we've established we've established our travel and our position. Now, put this tool away. Now we're going to want to set up and dress the wheel. This will go in the same position every time. I know that the nib's on top and my adjustment screw is here. All right, we know that's tight. Hear that rocking? It's just the center right here actually has a pin and that's where it's, it's rocking on. But what we're gonna do, I like that tension and I think we're just gonna try, we're just gonna lightly tighten that down. Okay, no more rocking on that piece. And it's got a good feel to it. It's not loose. I like that. 
All right, we're gonna come back to what we think is close to the center of the wheel. <clears throat> and we don't have to crank it in and out. We just have to crank like that. Okay, when I'm staring at the edge of the wheel, I can see a little bit of blackness on both edges. So it has a little bit of a radius on that wheel. So I'm going to take a little bit more because I want the full quarter inch width of that wheel to be usable. You can see straight on, there's probably, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch. That's a quarter inch wide wheel. Okay, I think I have enough good surface on that wheel to go ahead and touch off and see how it responds to our part and in this jig. All right, and we'll wipe the dust and everything else off of that. Okay, and nothing's loose, nothing up my sleeve. <laughs> okay, before we go down, I'm just going to go ahead and practice my back and forth run here. Okay, and I can stop it back there when I want. That way I'll be able to look, test, take off. Index. 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 I just thought of something that would be pretty smart. Let's go ahead and set up here. Let's measure the height of each of the valleys because we know that the OD was a little bit off, right? It was it was running out because the thing was bent and we don't know what the valleys are running. So um, let's set this up at zero and plus two, plus four, plus five, plus four, plus one, Zero, zero. 
Okay, this is our high one. Let's go ahead and touch off on that one because we're going to index it from there. So I just didn't want to do a grind on a low one and then index it and then come. I want my adjustment to be at least, I don't care if it's less than, but I don't want it more than, right? Okay, we just started a spark right there. Index. 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 index now also too while we ought to do this we'll go as soon as I get to the first one there we'll put a mark on it okay <laughs> mm -hmm. okay and this is number one Put a mark on both sides. <laughs> All right, let's uh, give it about a half a thousandth. Okay, back to one again. That's pretty good. You actually get to look at the groove that uh, was just ground. I'm giving it two passes each, each, each flute. Oh. Okay, back to the first one again. First one again.
Okay, it's a little tiny bit left right in that area right there. back to the first one okay I got to get a drink and a couple other things here so I'm gonna shut her off here and take a second I got my mic now we don't really have two that are clean from each other we have like one two we have we have three and then one barely starting to clean so Another couple passes we'll be able to read across there. But I do have a, a rough dimension here. And one inch 480. Okay, and we're going down to 465. So we have 15 thousands total on the diameter right there. So we do have a bit of grinding to do on this. Um, awesome. All right, let's get going. Those are the three that are uh, pretty well dressed. Just starting to have a full one there. On the one end. That's a half a thousand per pass. That first one's almost clean. A little bit on that one. I've had a little bit of time to think about how it's going to do this.
I'm gonna take a dimension because actually I gotta I gotta cut all the way around except for a little tiny bit on that one right there. But this end here is a full grind. Okay. So at least we'll know what it was by the time we get to bare minimum clean up here or full cut all the way around. <sighs> one inch, four, sixty nine and a half, almost seventy. Okay, so it looks like we got five more thousands to come down off of there. Okay, I have <clears throat> another cool mister that I've been putting together. Um, because I like the one that's on the lathe that we used uh, there. And we're going to see if we can come in here with the cool mister. Because I want this to be ground at, at a cool temperature. And I want to keep it keep the temperature down on it. Because I'm going to grind it and I want to measure it. I want to measure it in real temperature. And also have it real close because we're going to be making sure or checking the fit. with the female here all right so I think I pushed a little bit here tonight and I'll pick it up in the morning our cool mist attachment came in and I got two fittings and I'm running a Parker you ever the Parker self locking or push lock hose 350 psi by just pushing it over the barbs all right, so that, that just basically gave me my supply. I got this, and I figured it was going to work out for my situation here, but I just couldn't believe when this showed up. Two hole mountings here, and this length of tip, and the kit came with a clamp mag base type mounting for it. So I go, okay, well, I put this fitting back in here because this is where the, the, the flood coolant or your, your coolant actually mounts to and or other attachments. And I was concerned about this clearance here. And I have, I have my almost that section of my finger right there. I can almost get underneath here. And we're within thousands of our finished diameter. So I know that this is never going to come any closer. So now I'm going to go ahead and use that to mount this. The coincidence that those two holes <laughs> match up with these two holes. There was something that mounted on here with that screw and this slot right here. There was a piece that mounted on here. Don't know what they actually had here. Um, and all I'm concerned about is, is go ahead and pull those two screws out of there and see if those holes line up or if I'm going to have to just slightly modify these holes right here to suit that because with that mounted right there look at this okay this will give you enough whatever head distance has got to go it's just enough to where it wouldn't snag around here or, or whatever the the bracket the bracket here is nothing more than a quarter inch diameter and almost like a uh, a, a clamp for mag base extensions type of situation and then there's two plates right here and they just grab the tube on each side of the tube all right so of course I don't need the rest of this base here but I do want a quarter inch sticking out of here um, with a lot of other attachments I've had a couple of these and I just take a quarter inch bolt and I cut the head off and leave the shank here and that thread and, and then lock it on a nut sometimes this actually screws into some of my mag bases and i can use it for a short indicator support also things like this okay now that will give me this mounting 
right here. All right, so it's going to be nice and close, and I should be able to mount this up. All right, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to get those screws out of there, and we're going to find out if we actually have a mate for that. Shit, that'll just start another project. <laughs> Little purple power. <laughs> all right, all right, that's enough. All right, 469. 469 is what I measure right across the bore right there. I measure our part right now exactly the same thing if that's the tolerances and this is 465 That's four thousandths clearance. I think two should be enough. So I'm going to go ahead and take this down to 467. And we also got into checking the width of our teeth here. And we're almost certain that we're going to have to uh, grind some on them. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll detect that after we get the, the root down to size. I put a couple of pig blankets back here so that we can absorb the coolant and our, our coolant is working fine. Got my uh, season formula up here. <laughs> okay, so that all stays nice and neat, and we got this mounted up here really well, and we also made ourselves a couple test maneuvers there. Alrighty, I think we're exactly the same place we were last night, so we're just gonna make a couple cycles here. We're still on our same mark in and out. I've already made a couple of hand passes here. Remember the part was warm when I stopped last night, so I actually think we might have to come down a half a thousand or so to get it. There's a half a thousand, nothing yet. That's another half. Back up to the start. We're gonna we're gonna mic this. See where we're at. 768. I'm measuring each and every one of them. 
I've been going around here. 768. 768. Okay, that's back up to our top. Okay, so I'm going to make another pass at a half a thousandth, uh, mic it, and then another pass. And I think uh, I think we're going to hold up on it, uh, and we, then we'll be able to pull the part out, and we're going to check and see if it does slide inside the cog. Uh, and then we're going to make an assessment of how much has got to come off the side of the teeth. All right, this is our last pass. And there's back at the beginning. All right, we're gonna pull it out. Four sixty six and a half. Blunt. <laughs> okay, would you believe that the thing actually starts on there? We are almost there. <laughs> little mark there and a little mark there on the base, but uh I'm looking on the side of the teeth here too for for any indication. Okay, now I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a flashlight check too, um, and that's get it on here like I had. Okay, we're tight to the side of the teeth. I don't know if you can, let me see if I can. Okay, I got, got light just barely under the center and over the top. So it's side, it's tight to the side of the teeth. 
but we had a feeling that it was going to be like that anyway. All right. We're going to take the other shaft and we're going to grind while we're in this mode. We're going to grind the root of the other to this diameter. We're happy with this diameter. It's a couple under the bore of this and it's one and a half over the stock shaft. All right, that's it for this episode of Job Shop USA. Until next time, get her done.